Hello everyone. I am Priyanka Patel and today we are going to discuss about introduction and characteristics of parental formulation. What are learning objectives of this video? After going through this video, learners will be able to understand basic concept of parental dosage form and primary characteristics of sterile formulation. So what is meaning of parental? Parental dosage form are those which are administered directly into body tissue rather than elementary canal. The word parental derived from Greek word para means beside and antero means inside. That means drug delivery which are given other than intestinal route. It is considered as parental dosage form and most often root are referred as subcutaneous root intramuscular route or intravenous administration of drug. What are advantages of parental drug delivery? It is the most effective way to treat the patient who are unconscious and who cannot take oral medication. Second advantage is it produces immediate therapeutic action. So it is the most desirable route in emergency situation. It is also advantageous for a drug which are not bioavailable via oral route or non-injectable route like proteins and peptides. Next one is total parenteral nutrient can be provided to the seriously ill patient who cannot consume food or even tube feeding option is not an alternative. Another advantage is Immediately, large amount of fluid and electrolyte can be given via IV infusion route to the patient who have serious fluid loss. Let's go to disadvantages of parenteral formulation. The significant disadvantage of this route is it is difficult to revert back its action. That means if any kind of allergic reaction occurs or toxic reaction occur, termination of action is not possible with most of the parenteral root or parenteral drug delivery. Like in tablet, we can use gastric leverage or emesis or we can use activated charcoal for absorption of drug for the termination of action, but it is not applicable for the parenteral delivery. Another is there is always risk of infection present with the patient during administration. And last one is cost per dose of parental drug is typically higher in comparison to the oral medication. Let's start with basic characteristics of parental formulation. First characteristic is safety. Why safety is important? Because as we know that parental formulation crosses the natural barrier of body and it is administered directly into the body. That's why it is necessary that API or additives which are used for sterile formulation that must be safe at the quantity it is administered into body. Second one is the sterility. So sterility is the characteristic which makes the sterile formulation or parental formulation different from other formulation. So what is sterility? Sterility is free from contamination. So to make the preparation sterile in nature, Sterilization techniques are used depending upon the formulation either hot sterilization technique or cold sterilization technique are used to make the formulation free from contamination and at the end sterility testing is performed to ensure the sterility of formulation. Next is free from pyrogen contamination. So first question is what is pyrogen? Pyrogen are a substance which has tendency to increase body temperature. So it is necessary that preparations are free from pyrogen. So for that, LAL test is used, which is in vitro in nature. What is full form for LAL? Limulus amoebocyte lysate test. That is used for the determination of concentration of bacterial endotoxin present into formulation. And it should comply with the pharmacopoeia. Next one is free from visible particulate matter. As presence of particulate matter leads to 
contamination or it is considered as indication for the contamination repression must be free from not only visible particulate matter but it should also free from sub visible particulate matter and it should comply the presence of particulate matter with the pharmacopoeia so why particulate matter are important because presence of particulate matter may lead to blocking of the capillary of the blood so to prevent blocking of capillary it is necessary that preparations are free from particulate matter and to make the formulation free from particulate matter many techniques cleaning technique and sterilization techniques are used to make it free from particles next one is stability so why stability is important so stability means formulation should be stable during manufacturing packaging and administration by means of physical and chemical that means for example formulation is not stable in form of a uh, liquid dosage form then in that case lyophil lyophilization is done that is freeze drying of formulation is done and it is manufactured in the form of solid formulation and at the time of administration it is reconstituted with a vehicle and then it is administered into patient so that will leads to increase the stability of the formulation so stability means it should remain stable physically as well as chemically during usage manufacturing and packaging next is compatibility so what is meaning of compatibility so compatibility means formulation should be compatible with what it should be compatible most of the sterile formulation are administered as it is without manipulating it but as we discussed that for lyophilized product it must be done it must be reconstituted so at the time of reconstitution reconstitution it should not lead to change in its basic properties so it should be compatible with the reconstitution fluid and administration sometimes small volume parenterals are also mixed with the large volume parenteral so when they are mixed with large volume parenterals they should be compatible with that vehicle so compatible means it should be compatible with dilution or administration soil or it should be compatible with the large volume parenterals with which it is mixed next characteristic is isotonicity so what is meaning of isotonicity isotonicity is formulation should have same tone or same osmotic pressure as that of the body fluid why isotonicity is important for parenteral formulation because it may lead to bursting if if it is hypertonic or hypotonic it may leads to bursting of cell or shrinkage of cell and may produces irritation effect at the site of administration so to avoid pain and irritation effect it is necessary that preparation should be isotonic in nature now start with route of administration so first route is intravenous route iv injections are administered directly into a vein and they are administered at 25 degree angle generally it takes about 20 seconds to circulate throughout the body because as it is directly administered into blood circulation mostly aqueous solution are most common formulation it offers most convenient route for rapid infusion of large volume fluid if formulation are given for a short duration of time it is considered as iv bolus dose and if it is infused for a longer duration of time it is called as iv infusion the flow rate for iv is expressed in terms of ml per hour and generally we can administer 50 ml at once or several liters per hour this is the route in which we can administer several liters per hour for, for other route of administration there is limitation for administration volume but iv is the route 
where administration volume is the limit of administration volume is not there. Next one is generally one to two each long bevet 18 to 20 got stainless steel needle is used for the administration. The most common indication for IV root is that it restores the electrolyte and fluid balance of the body. Next one is it guarantees the delivery of drug immediately in emergency situation and in serious life threatening condition immediate pharmacological action can be produced by IV root. There are also some of the disadvantage for IV root like uh, as it is administered into blood circulation, highly perfused organ like heart, kidney. In that case, serum drug concentration at highly perfused organ increases very rapidly that may lead to toxic effect. Next one is intramuscular injections. Care must be taken with deep IM injection to avoid eating of vein, artery or nerve and for the same plunger is pulled back after administration of the needle and if blood doesn't appear in the needle it means needle is not administered or needle has not had the vein or artery or a nerve. In adult in IM injections generally upper or after portion of gluteus maximum is selected for the administration. And for children in some adult, IM injections are given into deltoid muscles of the shoulder. Generally, 90-22 gauge needle with 1 to 5 each long needles are used for the administration. And IM injections are given at 90 degree. There is limitation of volume of administration and we can administer volume less than 3 ml. IM route of administration is convenient way to deliver medication compared with the IV route or other route of administration. IM route can also be used to produce prolonged action of time with oily or aqueous solution and suspension. Onset of response of medication is slower, but it is faster in comparison to the SC route and duration of action is much longer. Next is subcutaneous route. Administration of medic medications below the skin into subcutaneous space. Below epidermis and dermis layer of the skin, it is considered as the subcutaneous injections. They are administered generally outside of the upper arm, top of the thigh, and it is not administered into glossy, adipose, hardened, inflamed, or swollen tissues. It is having mostly longer onset of action and longer duration of action in compared to the IM or IV injection. They are administered at 45 degree angle and 25 or 26 gauge needle with 0.25 to 0.625 each length is used. The volume of administration is not more than 1.5 ml at the site of injection. And it is effective for administration of vaccines and medicines like insulin. Next is transdermal injection. Transdermal injections are given into capillary rich layer just below the epidermis for local anesthesia for diagnostic test like skin test for the tuberculosis, for immunization purpose and to check the allergic reaction. And to check the allergic reaction, small amount of various allergens are administered on the shoulder to detect the allergies. Next one is absorption is low and limited for intradermal injection. And only small volume can be administered like 0.1 ml. It is given at 10 to 15 degree angle and 26 to 30 gauge needle with 0.375 inch length is used. Next is intra-arterial route. The parenteral formulation is directly administered into accessible artery of the organ. The route requires specialized training because if artery is missed, it may damage the adjacent nerve. Intra-arterial route is generally used for administration of radio-opaque media 
to visualize the organs like heart or kidney. It is used to administer anti-cancer drug in organ-specific chemotherapy to ensure that highest possible concentration of drug reaches to the targeted organ. Next is intrathecal route. Intrathecal route is used to administer therapeutic agent to the cerebrospinal fluid to ensure that appropriate concentration of drug obtained at this site. It is generally used for the treatment of infection after neurological surgeries. Next is intradural and extradural route. Intradural administration involves injection of therapeutic agent within the dural material surrounding the spinal cord and extradural involves administration of therapeutic agent outside the dural membrane within the spinal duodenal canal and this route is generally used for administration of anesthesia next is intracardiac route intracardiac route involves injection of formulation directly into muscles of the heart and it is normally used whenever there is cardiac emergency for example cardiac arrest intraarticular injection Intraarticular injections are given into synovial sac of the bone joint and it is generally used for lubrication of the joint. Next is intracerebral injection. These are given into cerebrum. Next is intrapleural. It is given directly into pleural cavity of the lung and it is used for the fluid withdrawal. Generally 2 to 30 ml of fluid is drawn and 2 to 5 h and 16 to 22 gauge needle is used. With this, we conclude our video and in next video, we'll continue with the pre-formulation of parenteral dosage form.